Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all our distinguished speakers and all the participants. Um, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Vatsalya Sohu. I'm a research officer at the International Transport Forum here at the OECD. Uh, we are here today together with our partners, Niti Aayog and Upital Institute, uh, for the launch of the Decarbonizing Transport in India project. It is a part of the Decarbonizing Transport in Emerging Economies project, which has four beneficiary countries, namely Azerbaijan, India, Morocco, and Argentina. And we will go into further details during the course of this project, uh, of this meeting. Uh, besides officially launching the project, our aim today is also to inform all our relevant stakeholders, everyone present here today, about uh, the objectives and the planned activities under this project, and also at the same time to learn uh, about uh, the challenges and the trends in the transport sector in India today. Um, I will now let you quickly run through the agenda. I will share my screen. And uh, I would request all the participants to kindly mute their microphones during the course of this meeting and to directly put your uh, questions in the chat window. We will address them during the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I will hand over to my colleague from UPIO. Thank you, right. Uh, Vatsalya, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. My name is uh, Siddharth Sinha, and on behalf of Niti Aayog, I would like to welcome all those who have joined this webinar or are streaming it live via YouTube. Uh, at the outset, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the Secretary General of ITF and thank him for joining us for this launch. And I would, of course, like to extend a very warm welcome to our CEO, Mr. Amitabh Kant, who has always very much supported us with such initiatives. And also, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Mr. D.S. Mishra, who is the Secretary of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, which is one of the co-ministries, uh, you know, from the point of view of this project. I would also like to welcome all those who have joined us today from the International Transport Forum, the Wuppertal Institute in Germany, uh, who are our research partners, as well as officials of different metro rail corporations, smart city missions, and our colleagues from within different verticals of Niti IO, and also other people from World Bank, GIZ, etc., who are joining us. And we are indeed very proud to have partnered with ITF for this very ambitious and useful project in India. And we've been in constant communication with them for the past five or six months. And this call, as Vatsalya mentioned, will mark the official start of this project in India. And a lot of useful information about the project will be disseminated via this call. And before I proceed, a reminder once again to please keep your microphones muted at all times. And without further ado, let me hand over to Vatsalya. And I thank all of you once again for joining this call. And I hope that you will all collaboratively assist us in taking this project forward because this is a five year long project and we would need a lot of collaboration and support to make this project uh, a resounding success. Uh, over to you, Vatsalya. Thank you for that, Siddharth. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Secretary General, uh, Mr. Yang Te Kim, to please kindly deliver his opening speech. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, you're audible. Okay. So, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Mr. Khan, uh, Mr. Mishima, ladies and gentlemen in India. And thank you for being here today. And first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Khan and Niti Ayok for their continuous support and collaboration on this project. Despite the current circumstances in India due to the COVID-19, they have been working with us proactively to make this event possible today. Thank you everyone who has joined us virtually today to attend the launch of this project, which is a very important project for the ITF and for India. India has been an ITF member since 2009. We are very pleased that we are finally launching this project in India and that it is being well received by our project partner, Niti Ayo. The occasion of our meeting today is the launch of the decarbonization of transport in India project. I will let my colleague, Pier Paolo Pasola, provide you with more detailed background on this project and an overview of other ITF work related to this topic. Before that, 
for those who do not know as well, uh, I would like to introduce you to the ITF, our activities, our objectives, and my activities as Secretary General for the past three years, very briefly. So as you see uh, on the screen, um, we have a very uh, short history because we were created in 2006. So uh, we are now 14 years old, relatively young uh, entity, but we have a long uh, historical background dating back to uh, 1953 when uh, uh, ECMT, so-called European Conference of Ministers of Transport was created after the Second World War. So uh, in, in a sense, we inherited uh, European uh, the tradition, but uh, we are now becoming uh, more and more global by having uh, non-European members uh, step by step. So still, uh, as you see, uh, we have uh, the white color on the map, which means that we don't have uh, ITF members in, in the region. So mostly in Africa and in Southeast Asia and Latin America, we still have a long way to go. So especially I want to stress that in 2009, India joins. So it was relatively early stage of ITF history. And I really count on the Indian government for its uh, active involvement in ITF activities. So next, please. And very briefly, uh, ITF can be defined as an intergovernment organization. We do, not, we do not belong to the private sector. We uh, belong to the public sector with 60 uh, member countries on five continents. And among the 60 member countries, um, uh, only 25 countries are non-European, non-OECD countries. And we have 44 European countries and non-European countries, 16 non-European countries with us. And we are administratively integrated with OECD. We use OECD email and OECD the name in our publications. But uh, we have uh, the political, political independence in the sense that we respect the ministers of transport, our 60 member countries. And we are very proud that we ITF is the only transport platform with a global mandate for all modes. So you have ICAO for aviation, you have IMO for maritime issues, but uh, there is no other global entity who deals with all modes of transport in, in the world. So we are very proud of that. And we organize annual summits uh, in, in Germany from the beginning, uh, it was decided to organize that in Germany. So uh, from the beginning, uh, we held our meeting in Leipzig on a strategic theme. So basically this year, uh, the theme was um, innovation, but unfortunately, uh, owing to the crisis of COVID-19, we could not hold the meeting this year. And uh, it's world's largest gathering of transport ministers and uh, its output really help uh, policymakers to, uh, to conceive and implement relevant policies in, in, in their countries. And we are also a think tank because we uh, publish a lot of uh, research papers focusing on uh, interesting and different themes, as you see, uh, you know, from uh, the sky to land to sea, uh, we deal with uh, very innovative items, innovative topics. So um, we, we try to be a very policy oriented because we are not a research institute. We are not private consulting firm. We are supporting body for the real policy work. So uh, we focus on policy relevant research and analysis, and we try to provide evidence-based uh, outcome. And we are focusing on modeling data and statistics. And uh, we are also um, uh, try to collaborate with international exports. Next. Yeah. And very largely, we have five major themes in transport. I think those five themes can cover almost uh, any detailed you know, titles and themes in the transport sector today. So they are digitalization and connectivity and safety and security and universal access, including gender issue and uh, decarbonization, which is a hot topic today. So these five pillars can be uh, dealt with uh, very productively in collaborating with our member countries and in collaborating with our international partners. 
And also we have a very interesting special body composed of uh, private companies that is called Corporate Partners Board. So CPB is now uh, composed of 29 uh, the global the transport sector uh, the companies. So um, we have some companies in the maritime sector, in the you know surface transportation, railway sector, but we now recently uh, began to have more um, uh, digital sector and data sector and uh, security sector. So um, that is totally compatible with the, the new trend uh, uh, introducing new uh, mobility uh, services today. And next. And um, to make our work more productive and more global and more relevant, we continue to work together with our international partners. So we have three different categories. The first one is financial sector, and the second one is transport sector, and the third one is regional entities. The regional entities are mostly uh, working properly to invite non-ITF member countries to join ITF or work together with ITF in, in the future. Next. And especially recently, uh, I decided to enlarge our scope of work to uh, work more with non-transport sectors because now we uh, try to find more solutions, but we concluded that it's not possible to find the single solution only in the transport sector because now um, we need a holistic approach. Uh, we need an integral approach. So we need to uh, work more with tourism sector, trade sector, energy sector, urbanism sector, and environment sector. And transport can be a useful tool to promote those sectors. And also uh, transport can be uh, recognized as a you know, game changer or you know, very important actor uh, in, in developing our society. So um, this is a really uh, the recent uh, the activities of ITF. So I precisely uh, marked several dates uh, when I uh, began to work uh, with those international uh, the bodies. And next. So uh, this was a very brief overview of ITF. And if you visit our website, uh, you can always download freely all the research papers that we published it so far. And uh, you can get updated of what's happening uh, in, in ITF and in the transport sector. And we recently exchanged our uh, website links with our international partners. So um, we are trying to be a truly interactive platform and global platform for everybody, even for non transport sector. So I count on the uh, Indian government for our future collaborations. And uh, definitely, I hope that, and I believe that we can make great fruits together. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, Secretary General for his opening remarks. Uh, so we are indeed very excited about the launch of the DTEE project in India. Uh, next, I would now like to introduce Mr. Amitabh Kant, who is the CEO, CEO of Niti Aayog, uh, which is the apex think tank of, the, of India and uh, nodal development coordination agency. Mr. Kant, as you know, um, has been a key driver of prestigious, uh, prestigious initiatives such as Make in India, uh, Startup India, Incredible India, and so forth. Uh, Mr. Kant is extremely passionate about sustainable mobility. Um, he currently steers the national mission on uh, transformative mobility, which is at the helm of EV revolution. Uh, in India and has been instrumental in helping the government frame the frame to policy among others. So I would now request you to deliver the keynote address. Uh, distinguished uh, Secretary General, uh, my very, very uh, dynamic colleague, Mr. Durga Shankar Mishra, who is driving urban development and smart cities and mobility and many other things in India. Uh, I am a distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased that we are launching this very important project in India today. And I would like to thank the Secretary General and Secretary uh, Mahua for joining us in the launch of this project. At the outset, I would like to thank the International Transport Forum, the GIZ, Wuppertal Institute, and the German Federal Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation, and Nuclear Safety for conceptualizing and supporting the project. 
It has many, many stakeholders and they're all committed towards this project. Uh, we had planned a massive launch for this project, which had to be canceled due to COVID-19, but I'm glad that we are finally having the launch over a webinar today. In fact, I'm very happy that not only are we joined by officials from various ministries, but also by stakeholders from state and city level transport agencies, as well as representatives from World Bank, GIZ, etc. Our association with the International Transport Forum has been extremely fruitful and constructive, and it is Niti Ayog that represents India at the ITF since 2008. For this project, Niti shall be bringing together all the stakeholders, as well as our own transport, energy, EV, and environment verticals, verticals to support you in this project. I'm sure we can use cross-sectoral expertise from across ministries, Niti Aayog, international development agencies, as well as public and private stakeholders to ensure the success of this project. I recently heard from GIZ regarding their INDEC TIA project, and I'm very happy that the work streams of both these projects are so closely integrated. India has a very huge and diverse transport sector, which caters to the need of over a billion people. In fact, we are the largest manufacturers of two wheelers and the fourth largest car manufacturer in the world. Indian auto manufacturers produced a record 30.92 million motor vehicles in 2019, including 4.03 million passenger vehicles. India's transport sector with the fourth largest rail network in the world and the third largest global aviation market presents a huge and a massive opportunity, but there are also challenges. And these challenges are in terms of emissions. Air pollution, particularly in the form of particulate matter, is a serious challenge in India and the transport sector is a significant contributing factor. Because the vehicle fleet is small relative to the large population, India has very low per capita transportation emissions. But that fleet is growing rapidly. Total vehicle sales increased from 10 million in 2007 to nearly 30 million in 2019. And total number of vehicles in the road is expected to nearly double by 2030. This presents a big challenge in terms of emissions. The transport sector of India is also the third most greenhouse gas emitting sector, where the major contributing comes, contribution comes from the road transport sector. Out of the total carbon dioxide emissions in India, 13% comes from the transport sector. These emissions have since tripled, have tripled since 1990. The increasing motorization and the demand for mobility in India have contributed to air pollution, congestion, as well as the increase of greenhouse gas emissions. In the urban area, India's urban population is expected to grow to 814 million by 2050. My colleague, Mr. Mishra, will touch on some of these aspects. Climate change cannot be stopped without decarbonizing transport. Globally, transport emits around 23% of the energy-related CO2 that feeds global warming. Without immediate action, its share should reach 40% by 2030. Transport emissions have grown faster than those of any other sector over the last 30 years. Decarbonization of the transport sector would create a cleaner, healthier, and more affordable future for everyone. This project would help India translate its climate ambitions into actions, the modeling tool and assessment framework will provide a targeted analytical assistance to identify these climate actions and help draw policies rooted in data analysis and advanced modeling. Given our diverse demographies across socioeconomic factors such as population, age, income, it would be important to first estimate the demand for transportation in India and then do a detailed modeling to compute the CO2 emissions. Building on this evidence-based assessment of mitigation factors, bringing DTE and NDCTI together under this collaboration would support our policy making by under identifying various scenarios to achieve nationally determined contribution targets submitted by India under the Paris Agreement. Decarbonizing transport is crucial to achieving our Paris Agreement goals. The project could very well define our future urban policies and could help us in designing policies which are firmly grounded in data and are likely to be highly efficient and impactful across the entire transport ecosystem in India. 
We will work along with Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways in being in the forefront of driving sustainable mobility in India. We, are, uh, we have uh, taken several initiatives. We run the National Mission of Transformative Mobility, which is housed at Niti Ayo. We have, the government has released the FAME 2 with an outlay of 10,000 crores. We incentivize over a million electric two-wheelers, half a million electric three-wheelers, and four-wheelers, and a lot of buses. Uh, we have also taken several proactive steps uh, to push electric vehicle mobility. Our belief is that the future is shared, connected, and autonomous. Uh, in India, the vehicle usage is extremely low. It's just 20 per thousand. Uh, E-mobility, uh, as if you go by a recent report by Morgan Stanley, India's transport evolution, that India would be the primary driver of e-mobility where 30% EV penetration would happen by 2030 and India would have 35% shared miles by 2030. And therefore, the future of transport lies in shared, connected and autonomous mobility. This output of this project would bolster our efforts to make transport in India much more clean and sustainable. I'm really, uh, I look forward to this very ambitious, challenging, yet extremely productive exercise and guarantee full support of Niti Aayog as we move forward. I'm sure that the development of this tool for a country as large as India would be a first. I wish all the teams and stakeholders who are collaborating for this mammoth exercise all the very best and all success. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir. I think I think you have summed it up uh, really well, especially with some very interesting facts wherein you mentioned that in India, we just have about 20 to 22 cars per 1000 population. If we compare this to the US, it's almost 800 plus. So there it's there that we have a tremendous opportunity in terms of trying to complement them with cleaner modes of transport like, you know, EVs and ZEVs. Uh, and like you rightly said, the three other project countries are Azerbaijan, Morocco and Argentina, but not a country like India. So I think this will be a first and we will all work together to ensure that this project truly becomes a resounding success story for, you know, for India. Uh, moving on, as you all are well aware of, a big component of the transport sector is the urban transport. You know, cities across the world are sprawling outwards and, you know, this rapid urbanization will just continue to take place. And, you know, in order to ensure that this rapid urbanization remains healthy and sustainable, it is the urban transport which will play a huge role. Uh, you know, with the onset of COVID, the challenge is that, you know, this might just push away people from public transport. And it is here that ministries such as the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs will assume a very important role. Uh, the officer at the helm of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs is uh, the secretary, Mr. Durga Shankar Mishra, who is the dynamic person leading the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. He has previously served with the government of UP which for the context of the International Transport Forum, which is based out of Paris, is one of the largest states in India and the most populous state of India, which has a population of more 190 million, which is about three times the population of France. So without any further ado, I would now like to invite B.S. Mishra, sir, to please uh, deliver his address. Respected CEO Niti Aarok, the Secretary General of the International Transport Forum and all the participants. A very good afternoon to everybody. At the outset, let me just thank Niti Ayok for organizing this uh, today's workshop on decarbonizing transport in emerging economies. This is going to play a very, very important role, especially in the context of the urban. Would like also like to thank GIJ, WI, and the Federal Ministry of the Environment, Nature Conservation, and the Nuclear Safety of the Federal Republic of Germany, who are also participating in this. They have they are also working with us in the urban transport sector. Before I speak on this subject, I would like to mention that under the COVID uh, pandemic, which has engulfed the whole world, the public transport is one of the areas which has which is facing the challenge and we have consulted experts 
from the World Bank, from different multilateral agencies, that, that those who are working in the field in the in India, and based on that, we have issued an advisory on 10th of June, the uh, 2nd of June. My joint ready reminds me 2nd of June. That captures the spirit of what is to be done under the COVID-19, which is going to stay for quite some time. So how to maintain that social distancing, how to make sure that the life has to come back, the economy has to move. So how to what actions to be taken? And we have the short term, medium term and the long term strategies based on one, the non motorized transport that is pedestrian uh, and the cycling, etc. The second is the public transport, how to maintain that using the uh, uh, social distancing. And the third is how to use the technology in the best possible way, innovative way, so that we take care of the public so that they do not uh, get infected while they are moving. So this advisory, I mean, in fact, this has been taken. We are following with the state governments. They are the ones who are going to implement. We are following with them so that uh, these get implemented and we provide such facility to the public. The second advisory we have issued, uh, issued that is related to pedestrianization of the marketplaces. Because during this pandemic, we have learned, I mean, even though uh, the unlock has started from 1st of June, still the markets are facing certain challenges. So what needs to be done? One of the major actions needs to be done is the pedestrianize or market. And we are following with the state governments. Again, this has been taken very positively by the social media as well as by the print and the uh, 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 or electronic media. And people are trying to take action. The states are working on it, especially we are focusing on the smart cities and the million plus cities. Uh, as the CEO Niti Aayog sir mentioned, our country is urbanizing very fast. Our population at present it is, uh, it is uh, estimated to be around 400 million. And this is going to go up. The latest report of the uh, UN, that uh, as per that report, this is going to go to nearly 880 million by 2051. I mean, when we have the census of 2050, this is going to grow up to nearly 880 million. That is more than doubling in the next 30 years. That's a huge challenge. I mean, in terms of providing various kind of the infrastructure and especially the mobility. So we need to see the mobility in a different way. We have been trying to address this. In fact, tomorrow only, just tomorrow, my minister is going to launch. We are going to, in collaboration with certain institutions, we are going to launch a uh, challenge for a uh, cycle for change. We would like to make our cities more, uh, uh, I mean, walkable, more cyclable. So we are uh, we are launching a challenge, cities for change challenge, uh, a cycle for change challenge. And with this, we are going to help the cities through the challenge process, come out, develop a model. We will also handhold them through the technical assistance. So some assistant and the Amruta scheme so that the especially the bigger cities, the our million plus and the smart cities, they become more cyclable and more walkable. We have, I mean, our uh, it was again touched upon by uh, CEO Niti Ayo that in our country, the total number of the vehicles getting registered is far, far more than the population growth. The population growth is around uh, is hangs around 2%, whereas the number of vehicles getting registered is almost like 10 to 11%. Per annum. That's a huge growth in the vehicles, and we need to take because the vehiculars, this particular sector causes maximum, I mean, one of the major damages to the air uh, uh, pollution. The particulate matter is almost like 20 to plus 20 percent is contributed by the vehicles. So, what needs to be done so that these vehicles are out? One strategy which our country has taken is the metro rail pr uh, promotion. So far, we already have 800 kilometers of the metro rail operational in 18 cities, and it is carrying nearly 85 lakhs, that is 8.5 million per day. It is the figure which I'm uh, quoting uh, pre COVID, and it will come back, I'm sure, once this COVID situation is over, it will come back to around the same number. If you take an study, I mean, the uh, uh, there, there is a technical study which says that a passenger who travels around 10 kilometers on metros, he is saving nearly 780 grams of carbon. If you take that number, the total saving because of just metro, which is operational in the country, 
is to the tune of nearly 25, 2.5 million tons of carbon is being saved by the use of. Let me also tell you that we are constructing nearly 900 kilometers of the metro or the RRTS. That is all under construction. And the target is the next five years, maybe because of COVID, it may be delayed by another one year to five to six years. These 900 kilometers of metro or RRTS is going to be operational. That will take our number to nearly uh, 15, 1600, 1600 kilometers. And many more are in the pipeline. On the BRTS front, that is bus rapid transport system, we have got nearly 450 kilometers of the bus rapid transport uh, currently under in cities. And in many other cities, it is under construction. For the buses, city buses, we have got nearly 50,000 buses under the city bus operation. And 500 uh, electric buses, they are going to be added to the fleet. The ministry is collaboration with the uh, Niti Ayog in uh, consulting with Niti Ayog. Uh, uh, CO sir is very well aware. I mean, with the assistance of the German uh, uh, German assistant, we had signed a, uh, 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 a low cost loan with them, 1 billion uh, euros. From there and our uh, central government, state government assistance, we are going to launch a program for augmenting the city bus, the numbers for the cities with, whose population is more than 500,000 plus. We want to add more and more number of buses. Then non-motorized transport and the, uh, I mean the public bike system. This is something which has come up very well in our smart city, the 100 cities which are moving, the 100 smart cities, that learning is being translated to the other cities. It is one of the very important component of our national urban mobility, uh, uh, urban transport policy of 2006, which is uh, happening across in various cities. And we are, I mean, through the challenge process, through various other modes, we are trying to promote this uh, non motorized transport. One more area which is most important why not obviate the need of traveling at all altogether? And that is. Through our urban policy, we are promoting transit-oriented development policy. We have a national policy on the transit-oriented development where we promote walking and uh, cycling. And only for few needs, you need to go out. That means you can take the rapid transport system. This transit-oriented development policy, I mean, it is being adopted in Delhi. It has been adopted in various big cities across the country. And that is going to cut down. In fact, there is a, uh, a strategy. The strategy is called asi that is avoid shift and improve that is avoid traveling as far as possible so have your workplace have your marketplace have your entertainment place have your all institutional things right next to your place so that you can walk down to the place you can cycle down to the place you can shift shift from i mean the usual transport your your private transport to the public transport from in the public transport from one mode to the better uh, better mode which is going to be decarbonized and improve use the technology the technology front on the bus we have developed the various kind of specifications which are going to be the low consumption of uh, uh, i mean the less producing carbon we have various other e-mobility all uh, different kinds of uh, uh, use of the uh, uh, fuel so that we are adding minimum to the minimum carbon to the uh, atmosphere so all these strategies are working and I mean, there's a long way to go, definitely. And especially as I mentioned, when our population is going to double in the next 30 years, our strategies need to be in tune with our requirement. Strategy for urban planning, which has to be in tune with the, the transport planning, has to be in tune with the uh, rest of the habitation planning and other, other development planning, for which we have launched another scheme where, with the help of the SEPT University, we are uh, trying to help the cities i mean we are trying to develop the capacity of the cities uh, through the all the uh, all those who are in the town and country planning uh, 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 directorate of the state governments through the town planners so that they redevelop the place they, they redesign the place i mean whether the green development or the brown development it has to be the transport and the planning urban planning has to be in tune have to be together so uh, i mean that is uh, uh, our strategy through which we are working i would congratulate uh, Niti Ayok for coming up with this very, very important subject that decarbonizing the transport, which is one of the commitments of our Paris uh, 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 
Paris, uh, no, the, 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 there was a Paris uh, Accord. I mean, this this uh, was one of the uh, commitment of uh, of the government of India, and we are working to achieve that. So, with this, thank you for this uh, uh, very important initiative. I wish you all the very best, and let me my ministry will be. It is rather working, and with your uh, 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 kind of the uh, new initiative, the new technology which you are going to bring, we will further upgrade our. Uh, uh, what we are delivering in our cities. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, as you rightly said, uh, during the COVID pandemic, um, public transport faces a major challenge, uh, and we need to use technology in an innovative way uh, in our uh, short term, medium term, and long term strategies. Um, and uh, so, in fact, uh, one of the key component of our project uh, here it would be the data modeling and assessment framework, uh, which would help us, uh, you know, make the right policy interventions. Um, and so, your address and your input would definitely give us the right direction for this project. Um, another important stakeholder uh, in this project in India uh, is the Ministry of Road, Transport, and Highways which is the apex body for formulation and administration of the rules, regulations, and laws relating to road transport um, and increase the mobility and efficiency of road transport in India. Uh, unfortunately, at short notice, the secretary was called for a high-level meeting, uh, but we have Mr. Priyank Bharti here with us, uh, who is the joint secretary at the ministry. Um, so I welcome you to this launch event uh, and uh, I request you to make your address. Before that, uh, Mr. Young, I had a very important meeting. So with your permission, I will take leave. My colleague, Mr. Rakesh Sarwal will be here. He will be here and my senior advisor, Mr. Saha will also be here. Uh, unfortunately, I have a very urgent meeting in the Prime Minister's office, so I'll have to go. Um, my uh, thanks to you and my thanks to Mr. Durga Shankar Mishra for having uh, driven this project. Thank you very much. Now request. Uh, Mr. Prang Bhatti, so uh, I would request you to make your address. Can I, can I also uh, uh, request uh, Joint Secretary, my, my Joint Secretary, Urban Transport, Mr. Jadeep here. So I have to uh, go for, as I mentioned, tomorrow is our uh, uh, five year annual. I mean, the, the, we have three important schemes the Smart City Mission, Atal Mission for Urban Rejuvenation and Transformation and the housing for all Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. All the three schemes are completing five years tomorrow. We have a huge function. I have to go for various things. I need to go and prepare for it. So my joint secretary, Mr. Jadeep, is here. So uh, he will join. Uh, one more area which major initiatives are taken is the National Common Mobility Card. In fact, uh, Jadeep would like to add on that the National Common Mobility Card. That is uh, another game changer which is uh, happening across the country. And uh, one more initiative, that is the National Urban Innovation Stack. We are trying to develop a stack through which we can completely bind the whole thing. I mean, all urban services, including the uh, public transport, on this once we say once we have this NUIS and uh, the uh, is the uh, uh, the pilot phase is already over. Now we are uh, working on that. So these are the two major initiatives which are going to work. Mr. Jadeep will uh, speak on that. Uh, I will take leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we would really look forward to all the work uh, that you are doing. Um, welcome, Mr. Jadeep, uh, who is the OSD at um, uh, the ministry. Um, and I would now like to invite um, uh, Mr. Priyank Bharti uh, for, for his address. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished uh, Secretary General, uh, the other uh, participants. In fact, uh, the CEO Niti Ayog and the Secretary Ministry of Housing and Urban Development has very aptly summarized uh, uh, the framework in the country. Just like to add, like you know, one or two points. Uh, the ministry, specifically the Road Transport Ministry, has uh, uh, been taking many steps for kind of uh, promoting new technologies and uh, for promoting the greener and the cleaner fuels. For uh, electric mobility, we have the regulations in place. We have been promoting it. We have been uh, uh, promoting the fuel efficient vehicles in the country, the the, uh, the cafe norms or uh, other related kind of uh, 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 
kind of like laws in the country. We have been encouraging alternative fuels in the country. We have uh, the specifications for uh, CNG, LPG, uh, LNG, bioethanol, methanol, dimethyl ether, methane. So all these uh, uh, kind of like you know specifications are available in the country. We have uh, vehicles also. There are manufacturers also who are kind of like you know into the business, and we hope. Uh, in times to come, we have all these kind of like cleaner and uh, good vehicles in the country. Number, I just want to like to share. Uh, as on date, uh, we have got a centralized uh, registration uh, of vehicle uh, system available, which is called Vahan. We have approximately around 25 crore of vehicle which are listed there. And uh, our belief is at least like, you know, 17 to 18 crores of vehicle are running in the country. With that. That's a huge number. And when you see the concentration, as was pointed out uh, in the initial address, like uh, some uh, uh, cities, there is a huge concentration. So obviously, there is a dire need for uh, uh, decarbonization. I'm uh, from the ministry. We are very hopeful that uh, this particular project uh, would be uh, uh, very smoothly. I, I think they conducted and that would obviously be uh, utilized in a good way. Our support would always be there, whatever be it uh, will support it and whatever uh, uh, mechanism it would be, our support, our officers would always be there. Thank you for listening. Thank you. The representatives from International Transport Forum, you would, uh, if you would like to take over now for your presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, to all the secretaries of the ministry, uh, Mr. Kant, Mr. Mishra. Um, what we're going to do in in the next uh, in the next steps uh, is to give you. Um, some more details about uh, what is the um, decarbonizing transport uh, in India project in India, and uh, um, I, we will have two speakers in these sessions. I will first introduce uh, um, the part of the project that is going to be uh, handled by by the ITF, the International Transport Forum. But uh, we will also have. Um, um, speakers from the Wuppertal Institute, who is uh, one of. Our, our key partner for the development of the project that will also uh, give a presentation on on on, on their uh, involvement in, in this project. The idea is also then to open up the floor uh, after these two presentations to um, stakeholders that are connected through WebEx or YouTube um, uh, to ask questions and, and discuss and help us shaping the development of, of this. Um, so without uh, Further ado, I will move into uh, the presentation of, of the component that the ITF is leading. Um, so what I'm going to touch upon is, uh, is um, first a, a brief introduction of, of the ITF decarbonizing transport initiative, then um, I'll give you more details about the decarbonizing transport in emerging economies project or I would say family of projects, where we're talking about uh, four different projects uh, in four different countries, then uh, grouped together under, under a single umbrella. And, uh, and then I'll go deeper into the specific case of the India uh, Decarbonizing Transport and Emerging Economies project. So first on the Decarbonizing Transport Initiative, uh, this is something that has been established right after COP21, so right after if you want the finalization of uh, um, the political deal of the Paris Agreement um, by by the ITF to respond to the strong call that came from governments um, interested in uh, taking action uh, to deal with uh, with the climate emergency, um, we uh, felt that uh, um, we had. Uh, strong um, opportunity there because uh, the ITF has developed uh, a thorough modeling framework that allows to make quantitative assessments of um, developments that take place in the transport sector and how also these developments are interconnected with uh, with the topic of, of greenhouse gas emissions, but not only more broadly 
the topic of uh, environmental impact, energy use, which is all essentially falling within the scope of, of, of relevance of this. In addition, at the, at, the, at, the, at the time when the project was kicked off, um, the ITF did, uh, I think, a wonderful job in gathering a very broad range of, of different partners in the transport community that are strengthening the capacity, the collective capacity to actually uh, move and, and develop solutions for this daunting task, which is transport decarbonization. And uh, in this framework, we've been managing to uh, uh, gain support um, by, um, by a number of, of donors, which include, in particular, in this case, um, Germany and uh, the Climate Fund. So I'll, I'll go in more details for, for the specific project of uh, decarbonizing transport in emerging economies. But this is not limited to that. There are other contributions for, for a wide range of other donors. So, And we see these elements as, as elements that are actually key enablers for us to uh, develop uh, the, pro the decarbonizing transport initiative and specific projects within it. Um, the initiative is structured around five uh, key pillars. One uh, is related with tracking progress, so understanding what countries support, for example, in their NDCs and uh, national data mine contributions. Uh, the second one is about uh, sectorial reports, uh, which have a specific focus on parts of the transport system, for example, urban passenger, road freight, maritime transport, aviation. Uh, these reports typically happen after uh, we have a consultation with stakeholders in a workshop and then we develop uh, insights and, and take the form of, of, of publications, ITF publications that, uh, for example, our Secretary General referred to uh, at the beginning. We also have focal studies uh, on specific aspects. Uh, here I have a few examples that I think are extremely interesting. Uh, one is uh, um, a study that was published recently on the impact of decarbonizing road transport on tax revenues, uh, in particular impacts of transitioning to e-mobility and the implication that this has and how we need to anticipate the change and think about solutions for that, uh, that may actually require a significant changes in the way we tax transportation. And um, we've been doing specific uh, studies, for example, on technology choices. There's one that has been published on the specific case of France. Uh, we're working now on, on, a, on a report on technical reg regulations and standards for low and, and zero emission trucks and buses, which are at the center of, of the interest, as was already mentioned, for example, by Mr. Kant, also in India, but not only in India, the, the topic of low and zero emission vehicles is, is very much um, present across uh, across the major economies in the world. And then we have national pathways and this project on India is hosted in that space. Uh, and we also have um, an element related with policy dialogue in particular with, with an involvement in, uh, in the UNFCCC and COP activities. And uh, um, for these, I think one, one uh, interesting item that I would like to mention is the fact that actually we're about to launch um, what we call Transport Climate Action Directory, uh, which is essentially a repository of possible policy instruments that can help countries move towards decarbonization of transport. And we also expect these to, to become a, a very interesting tool for the development of, of the activities in India itself. Um, we have, uh, within the National Pathway Pillar, which I showed before, we have a series of examples of, of activities uh, we have been working with the European Commission, for example, to develop a strategy for Europe. We've been working with Latin American cities in a project uh, funded by the uh, Inter-American Development Bank. Um, we have received funding from uh, the German Ministry um, for uh, the specific project of decarbonizing transport in emerging economies, which is also linked with, with another project, as been mentioned uh, also by Mr. Kant, which is the NDC uh, Transport Initiative for Asia. Um, and I'll get into details about this uh, in, in a second. We also have another project uh, coming up, which I think is extremely interesting and it relates with these national strategies, which is essentially the, the build-up of communities of interest across different countries that have uh, uh, common priorities and want to kind of compare notes of what uh, others are doing, for example, on transitioning heavy duty vehicles towards low carbon rather than aviation or, or shipping. So the kind of the, the difficult topics. 
um, the most challenging topics. So in the specific case of the decarbonizing transport uh, in emerging economies, we're talking about a project that has been funded by Germany in the framework of the International Climate Initiative. Um, and we are the main implementing partner. The Wuppertal Institute is our main um, partner. And uh, uh, their focus will be to work on cities, while our focus will be to, uh, to work on um, country level modeling frameworks that allow to uh, help developing the policy process. Uh, the key countries have been mentioned Azerbaijan, Argentina, and then Morocco, with India being the largest one. Um, the idea of the, of the project is to help uh, countries identify policy measures and quantify the impacts of these policy measures in order to design pathways that uh, can help them mitigate or reduce CO2 emissions over time. The, the instrument for that is the development of a quantitative assessment uh, framework, so essentially a model that has capacity to uh, show response to policy inputs. Uh, this will be accompanied by the um, idea of building capacity locally, so helping governments and, and institutions in the four countries, specifically in India in this case, to actually um, strategize what could be solutions for transport decarbonization given their priority, and also making sure that uh, there is a, a, a policy dialogue so that the policy ideas that are to be taken care of, taken into account in the quantitative uh, assessment framework are, um, are duly discussed the, with, with, with relevant stakeholders. So that's roughly speaking is the idea of what we want to develop. Um, the tool will essentially uh, assess CO2 emissions from transport for at a given year and then uh, in, in following years building scenarios that relate with different policy environments and uh, get to 2050 and uh, identifying effective CO2 mitigation measures. Uh, the idea is to build something which is easy to use and update that has uh, capacity to provide in visualizations that can be properly handled by, by, by policymakers in the country that therefore that we need for which we need their help to understand what, what, what would, what would be needed to include in that tool. And, um, and one key advantage is that uh, we have extensive capacity in terms of, of transport modeling. And so we can offer the possibility to develop this building on, on, on what is the in-house capacity already existing at the ITF, which we think is a valuable uh, contribution. Um, the capacity enhancement essentially uh, consists of, which I mentioned was one of the, the green boxes before, uh, is essentially uh, materializing to the fact that we expect national stakeholders to be uh, increasing their capacity to develop uh, transport CO2 uh, reduction pathways and to understand, to, to design policies for that. And, um, and so in order to help with these, we plan to develop a number of policy workshops uh either in the country and also with international contributions so that there is a possibility to foster a dialogue that goes beyond the the, the borders of india if you want one of the advantages of an igo of an intergovernmental organization like us is the possibility actually to convene uh, and help the indian government to get access to to information from outside uh, we plan to include also training event and uh, specific outputs such as user manual for the, the development of the assessment tool, the, the use of the assessment tool. Um, the idea is also to try to ensure that we have uh, across the four countries and specifically in the case of India in, in, in Southern Asia, um, then uh, we have uh, like some sort of rec replicatory effects by also engaging countries that are within the region and, and, and can uh, benefit from, from the experience that this project will, will bring forward in the case of India. More specifically on India, um, one important thing is that uh, we expect this project to develop hand in hand with, with the NDC Transport Initiative for Asia. So this is another project also funded by the International Climate Initiative of, of the German Ministry for Environment, Natural Conservation and Nuclear Safety, uh, which has a broader range of partners, including GIZ, ICCT, WRI, 
slow cut REN21 and uh, Agora Verkenswende. And um, that has a focus on, on three countries in Asia, China, India, and Vietnam. So one, India being one of them, ITF is involved in the India component. And, um, and we expect essentially, so the, the focus of these other projects in the specific case of India is uh, more oriented towards the academic and research community, but also related with uh, the idea of supporting policy making process. And um, so the, the, the idea there for us is that we have a possibility through DTE to have direct input into the um, help, direct help, provide direct help to Indian institutions. And then through NDC transport initiatives in Asia, we can also build or help building bridges between the research community and the institutions or strengthen existing ones to, uh, to ensure that then there is a capacity to keep going uh, there's a greater capacity to keep going uh, on these type of activities within the countries. So the idea of this project is to enable India to identify and revise effective measures um, and define pathways to achieve CO2 emission reduction, that's DTE, and working on with, with the broadest um, uh, range of stakeholders, including in particular the research and the academic community as part of the NDC TIA project. In terms of timeline, we um, foresee uh, what we're kicking off uh, the DT now. We, uh, together with our partners, we expect uh, to uh, kick off the NDCTIA project soon in 2020. And uh, for that reason, GIZ has been getting in touch with, with, with Nidia Yorg and Mr. Kant. Um, we uh, plan to focus in next year specifically on the development of the assessment tool, the definition of policy pathway, definition of baseline, definition of alternatives. To do that, we need to establish a dialogue between now and that moment uh, that allows us to understand what should be the instrument that we want to factor in, uh, in into the tool and what we want the tool to be sensitive to. So that's the task that is coming up. Uh, following that, we will be releasing knowledge products uh, and uh, on, on the different measures and the different effects. Um, and we also want, through the NDC TIA, making to make sure that there will be then, as I said earlier, capacity in India uh, to actually continue to, to, to further develop this type of uh, initial activity that will, will happen through DTE. Uh, the, the following steps will include training activities and outreach in the case of DTE, also regarding uh, the regional components and, uh, um, and the development then of, of the technical reports in the case of NDC TIA and the dissemination of knowledge together with other partners. Um, that's essentially it for the description of the project on my side. Here you have four uh, individuals listed uh, with emails. Uh, one thing I want to add is that uh, if, since we have the opportunity through this event to reach out to lots of people, we would be very eager to get inputs or ideas from you. So you can use uh, the, the emails that you see on the screen to actually uh, uh, get in touch with us if you think this is something that is interesting and on which uh, you, you would like for which you would like to learn more. Um, so that's that's it for me. I think uh, um, the best thing we can do now is to also let our colleagues uh, from Wuppertal Institute to uh, outline what is their plan in terms of contributions. So I'll stop sharing the screen and, and give the word over to Mr. Oliver Lapp and Sunny uh, Kodukula from from Wuppertal. Uh uh, Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, 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 yeah. Pierre. And uh, before we just uh, uh, go to the presentation from uh, WI, we are also joined <laughs> by uh, we are also joined by our additional secretary, Doctor Doctor Rakesh Sarwal, who has just taken over as the additional secretary at Niti Aayog. He is the he is the head of all infrastructure verticals, which means that he looks after both transport as well as energy. And uh, I would now like to uh, request her to, uh, you know, address you because, of course, as the head of infrastructure, and there's a clear, uh, you know, sort of cross-cutting, uh, you know, synergy between both energy and transport. So before that presentation, I would just like uh, to invite sir to address you. So, um, Mr. Secretary General, Mr. Young, and uh, other colleagues, 
from the ITF. Uh, it was very heartening to be witnessing this inauguration of the five-year partnership. And the presentation particularly that you made was very specific. I must compliment you for this presentation. And the modeling that you're talking about, the expertise that you have in the modeling, the timeframes, the partnership, all those are very welcome. Uh, I just have two small suggestions onto that. One is that the timeline, we can really uh, uh, advance it to 2021. The modeling exercise and the policy inputs, uh, we can try to finish it uh, towards the end of the current year and the half of the next year so that the extension can take place thereafter. And the second is in terms of partnership, we would like to build up partnership of research institutions in the country, the IITs and other academic institutions in the country, the civil society, uh, the other ministries and the departments, the state government. We'd like to build a partnership of all of them so that they give the input for the modeling and also partner in the development of the policy. So we look forward to more active interactions with you subsequently to work towards these goals. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much, sir. And now that sir has taken over as the additional secretary, there'll be a lot more interface on this project with sir, uh, and especially between transport and energy as well. And now, of course, uh, back to, uh, you know, the presentation by, uh, you know, Wuppertal Institute. Uh, they've been waiting very patiently. So let me hand it over to Oliver and uh, Sunny for your presentation now. Thank you so much. And I hope you can see my screen. Yes, your screen is very visible. If you could just put it on slideshow. Yeah, Here perfect, we perfect. We can see it now. Perfect. Thank you very much for, for having us, and it's a pleasure uh, to be here in this wonderful group, and we're really looking forward to, uh, to this collaboration. Um, uh, my name is Oliver La, and I'm joined here with my uh, colleague, Sani Kudukula, who will uh, take over uh, parts of the presentation. So we are both based at the Wuppertal Institute for Environment, Climate uh, and Energy, um, which is an environmental think tank uh, based in Germany. And uh, we belong to the state government of North Rhine-Westphalia, which is uh, sort of the industrial heart of, of Germany. Um, and around 200 uh, researchers work really on the entire uh, life cycle of sustainable development, um, looking at all key um, energy related sectors of which mobility, of course, is an important part. And uh, we are based both in, in Wuppertal, which is in the west of uh, Germany, and Berlin, which is uh, here. Um, uh, the main uh, implementer uh, in the context of this project is uh, the research unit that uh, I have the pleasure to run, which is uh, Mobility and International Collaboration. Um, and we focus on uh, sustainable mobility. Uh, considering all key uh, key aspects uh, of decarbonization, but beyond that, also focusing on uh, sustainable development, uh, uh, accessibility, uh, but also uh, focusing on other aspects that uh, relate to the implementation of certain um, sustainable mobility activities, uh, such as governance, financing, uh, the development of decarbonization pathways system integration within the sector, but also going beyond the sector with regard to uh, sector coupling related to energy and resources. And of course, one of the uh, core areas there um, is on the urban planning side of things. Uh, so um, we have a particular focus on the urban um, side of things, which is also our contribution uh, to this joint project here. We will be uh, focusing on the urban angle of uh, mobility. And uh, we go, uh, let's say, all along the, uh, the chain of implementation uh, in, uh, in the collaboration uh, approach that we have with many partner cities around the world. So we have a quite extensive um, uh, inform pillar, which is sort of our capacity building uh, program, which includes uh, e-learning, as well as if we are ever, ever ever able to meet again, then uh, physical trainings in the partner cities and countries, um, uh, where we also develop a range of tools that are helpful for uh, for planning and designing um, uh, sustainable transport policies. 
Um, there is a, a strong Inspire component in, in our program where we uh, team up city officials and transport operators to learn from each other, uh, from uh, experiences from around the world. And then one of the key things uh, to go to the next uh, step is uh, initiating partnerships. Um, this is on a government side, local and national government, but also startups and industries where we jointly develop business models and partnerships, um, which are part of our living that um, that we are setting up. We also had the um, uh, wonderful blessing uh, to have uh, a number of partner cities um, in India, uh, Kochi being one of them, uh, but many others as well. Um, and uh, some of those uh, living apps that we are working on, then we are also to scale them up and find financing solutions um, beyond our direct engagement of this. And one of the key pillars to, to implement that um, is a project that we have um, worked on for the past decade and has gone to, uh, to its next phase. Um, where um, we are uh, supported by the European Union um, with a partnership of 48 partners now and over 100 associates working on 10 living labs uh, all around the globe. And uh, there's also uh, replication countries uh, that, that we are serving uh, in collaboration with our friends from the International Energy Agency and UN environment, and of course, India is uh, is an important uh, country there as well. So we focus on uh, vehicles, operations, and integration that contribute to uh, sustainable urban mobility. And uh, a key sort of sector in this um, is the focus on electric uh, mobility. And of course, there India um, is is a front runner. Um, and we uh, we are keen to to take on the the learnings from India, but also contribute to to the very ambitious target that India has. So this is in particular where where the focus on electric two and three wheelers becomes very very interesting with regard to active support to local um, companies, to local industry, to local startups. So that's one angle that we would also like to bring in to this project. Um, and there are a number of uh, hopefully very useful learnings from our international living labs that we can bring into this program. And my colleague Sunny um, will now share a few thoughts on uh, some of the uh, direct contributions of the Wuppertal Institute to the DTE work in Indian cities. Uh, Sunny, over to you. So much, Oliver. I, I think you can hear me. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction and for the wonderful start uh, by the secretaries and the CEO of Niti Aayog. Uh, we are very delighted to be a part of this project. Uh, and uh, as uh, Pierre was mentioning in his presentation, uh, Wuppert Institute uh, uh, will be working on the urban aspects of the DTE project. And uh, for the India uh, chapter uh, of the project, uh, we have discussed together with uh, Niti Aayog and uh, have identified four cities initially. Uh, they are Bhubaneswar, uh, Dehradun, Kanpur, and Kochi. And as Oliver was mentioning, we are currently uh, already working with Kochi and uh, through another project uh, with the GIZ, uh, we are also working with uh, Bhubaneswar. And one thing to note that is all the cities are part of the smart city mission and uh, they have a mobility plan. Uh, some of them are even going the extra mile to develop a low carbon mobility plan. Um, and in, in these cities, uh, initially, uh, we have identified uh, the following topics that are on the slide. And they are uh, in uh, keeping in mind the, the current challenges that uh, various cities are uh, uh, facing, uh, the challenges that cities are facing in India. Uh, and uh, we will address these topics from an uh, integrated approach so that uh, uh, the topics are not uh, 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 silo driven, so that that uh, avoids the uh, the, uh, uh, the the lack of uh, not considering the sustainability uh, benefits of integration. And uh, urban uh, e-mobility would be uh, one of uh, an important topics that we'll be discussing with the cities. 
uh, both uh, because uh, as the CEO and the secretary in the morning were mentioning the great potential of e-mobility in India, but also uh, to benefit uh, from the other activities that we as Vopadal Institute are conducting, uh, uh, as Oliver was showing in the previous uh, slides, and that brings in a lot of uh, knowledge sharing opportunity uh, from the Indian cities to uh, an international context and uh, vice versa. Uh, next slide, Oliver. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so our role uh, in the DTE project uh, is we will work together with the cities to identify their needs, uh, technical needs and the capacity needs. And uh, this uh, will be important for us to uh, tailor make uh, capacity building activities and also uh, bring in uh, experiences from uh, other places that could be of uh, inspiration and use at the local context. Uh, and also uh, to uh, work together with the national level uh, decision makers and the local decision makers and uh, align uh, actions and measures so that uh, there is a coherent approach uh, in addressing uh, the decarbonizing efforts. Um, and also uh, to uh, assess the mitigation potential uh, so this goes in line with uh, uh, the data-driven decision-making approach where in uh, the, the decarbonizing measures that the city will be implementing are backed by, uh, 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 by data and analysis. Uh, so here, uh, this again aligns with the national level work that ITF will be doing in terms of modeling and, uh, uh, and uh, assessment frameworks. And uh, it's again important uh, to have capacity building because uh, just giving the tools uh, may not be sufficient for some measures and they uh, and the local decision makers and practitioners would also want to know how it was applied uh, elsewhere and uh, what factors were uh, made the measure successful. So this is all considered in the capacity building. And this will be, again, as I said, it will be tailor-made depending on the current actions and the needs uh, of the cities. And uh, to uh, take benefit of the other activities that we are doing in other projects, uh, and bring them into the uh, uh, the project context in India, and also uh, experiences from the three other uh, project countries in the DTE project. Uh, we'll be engaging in communication and dissemination activities between the project cities or among the project cities, and also uh, work together with the local partners to see and explore the possibility of developing uh, bankable projects uh, for the future. I think that's that's uh, solved from here. Thanks very much, uh, Sunny and Oliver. Um, I think now uh, it's a good time to move to the question and answers. And if if uh, our attendees on uh, Webex or YouTube have uh, have them, uh, we suggest just to make this practical uh, to use the chat for those of you who are in in webex and type the questions in the chat and uh, use a youtube chat as well or address messages directly to uh, at itf underscore forum on twitter or at nitya yog uh, also on twitter and uh, and then we have a system to help getting gathering different questions uh, we already have a few of them and uh, and I'll try to go through them, um, and we'll see who's uh, who's the bravest across the partners uh, that wants to take them on. Um, so we have a first question, which is uh, quite fundamental and help setting the scene, I think, is uh, how will it be possible for India to shift to non-fossil fuel mobility at an early date? The existing automotive sector represents 7% of GDP and is almost entirely run on petrol and diesel. And uh, I can I can try to, uh, well, the, the two other questions, one is on uh, EV battery standardization, why is not there, is it not there yet? And one is on 
urban bus development, uh, which is expected to play a potential larger role in, in decarbonization, but uh, there's a gap between where the fleet stands now and uh, where it should be. And so the question is how to, to close that gap. So essentially, um, maybe I'll, I'll try to, to say something about this for us. From, from my perspective, and then I'll, I'll give a chance to uh, Niti and uh, and our uh, colleagues from Bupeta also to give uh, their own view. Uh, regarding the the fact that uh, we're talking about uh, a very significant transition from from petrol and diesel to to different tra transport system, uh, that's indeed extremely uh, and and given the weight of of um, of of the automotive sector in 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 the economic in the economy, uh, we're well aware of this, and uh, and one of the reasons why we think that uh, supporting decision making process with quantitative tools is precisely that uh, walking across a, a transition that has to be so deep and and so thorough uh, requires uh, uh, getting help to. Uh, to better understand what kind of instruments uh, can allow us to achieve what kind of result and uh, how we need to coordinate the uh, action taken on, on in terms of different instruments uh, to to achieve to, to succeed essentially in, in in the transition there are some examples that um, help uh, figuring out for example uh, the, the, the complexity of these one one of the themes that came up was uh, in immobility with the question of battery standardization. Uh, the case of India is, is a peculiar case. It's, it's quite peculiar in the case of immobility due to the large rely, reliance on, on on coal in the current power uh, generation and uh, and the, the fact that. Um, most of the, uh, the the Indian fleet is essentially composed by light vehicles, starting from two wheeler, but also light cars. And so, um, the, it, it, this, for example, highlights the importance of taking coordinated action in the power sector and in the transport sector if uh, immobility is is the instrument for seen for. Um, or, seen let's say prioritized in 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 the by the local institution by by the indian institution or one of the instruments prioritized for for a transition towards a more sustainable transport uh, um, there are also aspects related with uh, with impacts environmental impacts which are we go beyond um uh, just the greenhouse gas emissions the the aspect of of pm for example uh, has been mentioned by mr kant before as a strong policy driver in india uh, there are aspects related related with industrial development so establishing this policy dialogue understanding the importance of these different aspects for the indian institution and in general for indian stakeholders is something that can actually help shape the kind of solutions that we need to be able to integrate and then quantify their capacity to actually deliver against the objective of decarbonizing transport. So uh, nobody denies the complexity of this or, or the challenge. And uh, we actually think that the tool uh, is, is an instrument intended to help uh, improve the capacity to respond to this challenge. Um, I don't know if uh, Oliver, uh, Sunny, or our colleagues at NITI also want to add something on this. Maybe uh, since or, or Oliver and Sunny, since you have this focus on, on cities, you may want to uh, try to address the question about the urban bus development and what you see as a strategies to, to foster that. And mm -hmm. then we give the word to NITI after. Desmond. Thanks, Pierre. Um, so maybe just very briefly, so one of the key things that we see uh, in the area of electric mobility beyond the, the car, let's say, um, is that this is not just uh, an aspect uh, that relates to climate change or sustainable development, it does as well, but it also provides a great opportunity for industrial development. And I mean, this is what we have seen in China in particular with regard to the electric buses, but also cars. Um, and this is what we are seeing as a great potential for electric two and three wheelers. And of course, you know, India is uh, 
is the greatest market um, of electric uh, three wheelers. Um, and there is a, an amazing potential to electrify those from us as, you know, let's say resource efficiency, um, space efficiency, uh, a kind of perspective. The Tuk Tuk, the auto rickshaw is, is a perfect vehicle. It is extremely small and is, it can carry up to five people. So um, comparing this to, um, to an electric Tesla, um, uh, you, you have, you have uh, the two extremes of sense or nonsense uh, of electric uh, mobility. So in particular, with regard to uh, electric auto rickshaws, um, we see a great potential for India to be being a leader. This is also a vehicle that plays an important role in Africa as well. So um, uh, there, there is a great uh, development potential that goes way beyond uh, sustainability. But of course, uh, being a sustainability guy here as well, um, um, uh, that's, a, that's a great opportunity uh, from, from a climate perspective there as well. And um, Per mentioned uh, the fact that for now, um, uh, the electricity is reliant uh, quite a bit on, on coal. So charging solutions that are decentral, that are renewable at the local level uh, for those small types of vehicles are becoming a real viable option. So that, that is something that we would look at from our perspective as well with regards to um, a focus on e-mobility that goes way beyond um, uh, the, the individual SUV type car and really has a focus on, on efficient shared electric types of vehicles. Maybe I'll pause here. Oh, well, and on the buses side of things, similar as well, there's a great potential on, uh, on industrial development. Here, it is quite a challenge to catch up with other lead markets. That is, uh, you know, obviously China, uh, that is a problem that is faced by the European uh, bus industry as well. So, um, there, of course, we would love to see uh, as well where there is potential in, in India and support that where possible. So maybe over if to I, me, Tina. If I may just add to what Oliver just said, uh, I mean, yeah, the the uh, importance of the industrial innovation is definitely there with uh, e-mobility and buses. Uh, and uh, another thing is also that uh, the industrial growth that happens in India, it's not just, it will have a ripple effect uh, because uh, many countries, uh, they have few options where to get the e-buses. So that is also an economically, it's going to be uh, beneficial. Uh, but from the decarbonizing transport project perspective, uh, we'll be uh, working with cities, uh, as I was showing in the slide, uh, electric mobility is one of the important aspects and uh, also to identify uh, business models that actually work in cities uh, and, uh, and work in the Indian context. That's it for me. Thanks. Um... Niti, do you have also a wish to comment on this? You know, I, I think uh, the answers that were given pretty much covers it. Um, we can also uh, open the floors to any participant who would want to just, you know, like make a few comments or ask any questions. So please just unmute yourself and feel free to ask them. Let's just organize this a little bit more. If participants wish to make a comment on, okay, on these topics, thank you for me. I'm Jadeep, I'm Jadeep uh, Joint Secretary, Urban Transport. I want to add two things on EVC vehicles that should also be looked into. Number one point. Yes, please go ahead. Number one point. This battery disposal system has to be in place because if e-vehicle comes, then we have to also think that that also includes, that also uh, creates pollution, land pollution, if battery goes defective. Number two point, we should also think of solarization of battery charging stations. That will improve your uh, carbon footprint. 
the two things I want to add. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll move on if uh, if we don't have any other people um, that wish to comment. I can give the word to the participants in WebEx. If you have intervention to make, uh, uh, please raise your hand. Use the raising hand tool, and I can I can see that. Um, in the meantime, we also got uh, other questions. Uh, we still have some time, so I'll take a couple more. Um, uh, give me some, just one second. Um, so there are different questions on electrification. Can we have more research on more mileage of electric passenger and commercial vehicles? Uh, there are, um, again, uh, another comment is about uh, um, strategies to accelerate commercial viability of EVs. And, uh, and then one more is uh, on the assessment uh, on the impact of uh, Euro 6 type engine specification as an interim step into uh, the transition towards cleaner uh, mobility. Two more comments we are also getting are from CW and Terry. Uh, um, suggesting to uh, basically follow up or informing us on activities that have been taken, uh, that have been undertaken. And, uh, and I think it will be extremely uh, nice to be able to follow up and try to, to learn more and build on what, what has been done so far. And um, so I would be very eager to, to, to take this discussion forward. I also, uh, we also had a question on what, what what can be the role of NGOs in this project? Uh, the idea of a stakeholder consultation uh, includes a variety of different actors from research to NGOs to industry. So I think if there's work that has been done that you think is relevant, I invite you to, uh, to contact us to, to, to let, let us know. So there, 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 is, there is scope for also having NGOs involved in, in the development of the, pro, of, the, of the project and through the, the events that will take place and we, we plan to, to set up to actually inform, inform this development. Um, I think, I don't see anybody in, uh, in the WebEx with a run, uh, hand raised. Um, and uh, so then I think uh, regarding the points that were made about immobility, uh, there's one thing I want to say, in particular this comment about the importance of uh, not just uh, decarbonization of power sector, but also the handling of battery disposal. Um, I think part of the, the, the activities that we envisage are involving contributions from, uh, from countries that are also uh, struggling right now with this question, with this very question about how to uh, make sure the battery disposal would happen in a way that is, uh, is not leading to, uh, to inducing new problems, essentially. And, uh, and this also links with the, with the question that came um, regarding um, in general, several questions that came regarding electrification. So um, working in particular in Europe, I think is advancing quite a bit in terms of standardization. Uh, um, there's, there are several activities going on. Uh, these include, for example, in the European context, the revision of the, um, the battery directive and the end of life directive of, of vehicles. And uh, so the idea for me is that being able to bring information to India on what has been done, for example, in the European context, it's something or to help uh, making sure that there is a greater awareness about this. Uh, I personally see it as, as one of the possible assets, uh, the, the possible um, unique contributions of, of, of this type of uh, project, given the, the international component of it, given the fact that uh, we have an IGO like the ITF that is involved in the process. 
So um, I hope uh, this, I think these sort of questions are exactly the type of questions that I think should come up in, um, in the context of, um, of, of, the, of the meetings and the, and, the, and the events that we plan to, to organize as a follow-up of, of, uh, of this gift cough. This also hooks me to the, the, the idea of essentially informing everyone that uh, despite the fact that we couldn't have an event in the country uh, due to the COVID-related circumstances, uh, we are very much eager to think about trying to uh, have follow-up events when, uh, when traveling will be uh, in, uh, available, possible under different conditions, but in, in the meantime, we'll, we'll, do, uh, we'll work remotely to make sure that we can have a number of bilaterals to better inform the process or multilaterals in the sense so bilaterals in, in the case ITF has been initially contacted by somebody and then involving the whole consortium with Wuppertal, with NITI and, and all the partners. But the idea is really to, uh, to, to have a number of events which will inform the different aspects of, of, the, of the development of the tool, including international experiences. One more question uh, from Terry is, uh, while the focus of the ITF quantitative assessment framework lies in developing national level tool, um, the focus of Wuppertal is more specific and uh, on, on the city level. Is there an integration between the two sets of work that will be undertaken? Um, yes. Um, so my expectation is that will be an integration. It will be difficult to have a model that is an all-encompassing model. We need to uh, we need to design this integration. We need to uh, work together to define uh, what will be the, the elements of, of, the, of the, the assessment tool, the national level assessment tools that then can be, be picked up and further developed in, in, the, in the urban contexts, uh, looking specifically at the, at the cities that have been selected uh, um, for, for for bringing forward uh, uh, the work of the project. Mm, we don't, I, I, I think that the key link will be, I don't see a, an easy solution in terms of uh, developing a hard link between the, the, the county level assessment and the city level assessments and the city level work. But uh, I think this is something that is still uh, for which if you do have constructive inputs and ideas uh, i we would be very interested to 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 consider them and listen to you and and understand if you if you think that there is a there is a there's a better way forward maybe oliver you also have a view about this on uh, or experience you have already developed in linking uh, um, the, the county level activity with the urban level activities in, in, in other cases? Do you want to say something about this question? Sure. I mean, this is really the core contribution to this program and, and also to, to the India component of it is that uh, we certainly see, and that's uh, no surprise that, of course, um, the mandate as well as uh, the ability to, to act and um, to invest uh, of our partner cities um, uh, are limited. So uh, state and federal level are always needed to provide um, uh, the right policy framework, the, the right um, uh, investment framework um, to, to the local level. So whatever we plan at the local level um, uh, needs the backing and investment support. Uh, so this is our contribution to this and that's the perspective that we would like to feed back um, in the urban needs assessment so maybe that touches upon that and that of course you know links back to our work to to national urban mobility planning um, and national urban policies that we have been doing for the uh, past years and collaboration with partner cities and then UN Habitat and others. Thanks, Oliver. Um, we have, there's one more question coming through the WebEx, which is whether the study will also focus on sustainable financing uh, for transport infrastructure. Uh, very quickly on that, I think uh, um, 
the, to the extent to which like a, an assessment tool can uh, provide insights about priorities or key priorities, for example, whether um, uh, what could be the the, the, the role of uh, of of different modal allocation in uh, in urban mobility or interurban mobility, and uh, and what could be the role of different uh, vehicle and um, energy carriers in, in the provision of, of, of the mobility within each of the modes, uh, that will also be having a link with, with the aspect of financing uh, of infrastructure because uh, it will provide information about the different type of priorities in terms of which type of infrastructure needs to be um, uh, prioritized by policy developments. Of course, this is just my, my line of thinking on this. So I do see a link between what we are trying to achieve with, with the development of the modeling tool and what uh, what are the implications on on in terms of financing that, that derive from that. So I expect uh, financing to, to be logically one of the policy instruments uh, that, uh, that then can uh, determine different uh, the, the, the evolution of, 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 a, of a, let's say a baseline pathway into into something different so in that sense i think this is part of of, of what is within the scope of what we want to touch upon i am aware of time so it's it's 15 past three in paris and uh, and 45 uh, past six, if I'm not mistaken, in India. So um, we have essentially the time for the closing. And um, so I, I'll i get this started. I, I, I would like to thank, first of all, Nitya Yog for having hosted uh, uh, this launch and uh, for the, the strong, that, um, um, determination shown in, in, in this event. I think, I, ho I really hope this is the beginning of, 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 uh, of a fruit, uh, fruitful activities that will have uh, several follow-ups. We were committed to that. Um, I would like also to thank Oliver uh, and Wuppertal for, uh, for their contribution and, uh, and to the development of this event. I would like to uh, thank the ministries uh, of housing and urban affairs and road transport and highways and all the attendees that uh, that connected and uh, asked questions and listened in and and uh, i would really encourage everyone to uh, if you see value in these and if you think uh, there are contribution that you can bring uh, to the project uh, we are in a phase where we want to talk to as many people as possible and we want to bring in these contributions um, we think there's value in, in this dialogue. There's, we expect to invest quite some time in 2020 on these, also as part of the activities, as, as I mentioned, of, of, of the other project and the CTIA. Um, so uh, it is it is very good moment. I think I hope after this kickoff to to reach out to us and uh, and let us know if if you think that there is uh, there is there is scope for working together on on the development of this. And thanks to Vatsalia, who super timely put the uh, emails on the on the um, on the chat. So that's what I I think I would like to say to close on our side. And then I think it would be nice to pass to to give the word also to Oliver first, and then Niti to conclude. Thank you very much. So you know, uh, many things have been said already. So uh, I won't you know, single out everyone, of course. But, uh, you know, a big one, obviously, to our friends at the ITF uh, for the wonderful partnership and uh, to our colleagues at NITI um, and, and the partner ministry. So really, thanks for, for hosting us. And uh, you will hear um, a lot uh, from us, uh, the urban perspective and, and, and the city angle to it, because we really see great potential there where mobility doesn't just contribute to, to climate change, but also um, can make a great contribution to make a city uh, successful or a complete failure. So we see the great potential for, uh, for co-benefits um, with regard to accessibility, air quality, uh, et cetera, of sustainable mobility. So, you know, this, this key angle of um, economic and industrial development opportunities of, of electric mobility. So this is something that we are very keen to bring into this partnership. 
and we're really pleased to be with you. So thank you very much for hosting us and uh, we'll, yeah, are very happy to uh, kick this off and uh, look forward to the collaboration. Thank you very much. Over to uh, Niti. Yeah. So we are very excited and glad to be part of this partnership, the beginning of this partnership. As I've already said, we would like to accelerate the milestones so that uh, the benefits start accruing early. Uh, we acknowledge that uh, we need uh, uh, more of transport which pollutes lesser and less. So this is a space uh, where we want to grow, but we want to grow in a sustainable manner. To that extent, we are grateful and we are very happy that International Transport Forum and NITI is collaborating. And uh, we look forward to the social benefits in terms of this collaboration, also in terms of safety. That aspect was not adequately covered, but there's a lot of strength that ITF has done, a lot of work in terms of safety. We like to see how we can build that into our workflow and as well as economic development while we go out on, on this path. So thank you, everybody, and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. I think we should close it here, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.